As job seekers look more and more like consumers researching your company before applying for a job, employer branding is becoming really important to most talent acquisition functions. We're gonna tell you the common pitfalls of folks who start off your employer branding strategy the wrong way, how to think about return on investment, and where to get started, which vendors you can partner with to accomplish your goals and move the ball forward. Okay, so let's talk employer branding. First and foremost, why do we care about employer branding? Let's look at job seeker behavior. The average job seeker now is spending two hours researching your company before applying for a job. And this is the average job seeker, the best job seekers, the people that you actually wanna hire, they're spending more time. This stat comes from the talent board. They survey a couple hundred thousand job seekers every year. 4%, that's what unemployments are hovering around. And we've got seven and a half million open jobs in the United States right now. So the bottom line is that people are researching you, they wanna be convinced to apply, and as talent acquisition professionals, we've gotta do everything that we can to convince those people because there's a tremendous amount of competition, especially for the top people who are gonna make a difference in our company. So here's the framework that we use for thinking about employer branding activities. It's the candidate journey or the hiring funnel. It starts off with awareness, it goes to interest, applying for a job, interviewing, getting hired, and hopefully coming out the bottom being a happy employee because all of those employee value props that kind of sold us on working at this company are true and they're keeping us happy and engaged when we're an actual employee. Here's our advice when you're getting started with employer branding or you're trying to ramp up your efforts. Number one, be maniacal about return on investment. We see so many companies that do amazing projects. Maybe they spruce up their job descriptions with video interviews and they spend time, they spend money. Six months later, the CFO comes back to them and says, hey, what happened to that $20,000 we spent on those videos? And the team says, well, we've got 3,000 views. Well, views don't translate into dollars and cents. Decreasing cost per hire does, decreasing time to fill, increasing retention, those things matter. And projects like this impact these sorts of metrics which impact those things that the CFO actually cares about so you can go get that next 20,000 and do your next project. Marketing is gonna be your partner. They're gonna be your strategic partner. They're not gonna be your execution partner. They are going to be amazing at giving advice on this makes sense, this doesn't make sense because everything in employer branding is so closely related to marketing sort of discipline. However, at the end of the day, they are motivated by the KPIs that they get compensated on, they get promoted by, namely revenue and driving awareness of the corporate brand. Last piece of advice here is to adopt that lean startup methodology don't feel like you have to build out this 24 month long employer branding roadmap. Things are gonna change, they're gonna change rapidly. Our strong advice is look at your candidate journey, look at your hiring funnel and pick out one area that's driving you the most pain. Maybe, for example, you're a B2B company outside of a major metropolitan area, nobody really knows about you, do an awareness campaign, let's do some Facebook ads, let's measure how does this increase our awareness and decrease our cost per hire, for example. Those are the sorts of things that we are looking at in terms of employer branding. This page is gonna give you a framework for ROI, some of the best partners and vendors to use, and also some of the mistakes that you can circumvent, save yourself the time and the aggravation. Good luck on your employer branding.